Hey, Andy here. YouTuber commented on asking me to show how to deploy applications, start from basics, go for maybe something a little more high level. I thought that was a pretty good video. I'm surprised I haven't made one yet on it. So just spun up my demo cluster uh, just to kind of show you. I use, I use Bash. It does a bunch of VMs in DigitalOcean. It deploys RKE2. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do that. It does RKE2, and then it deploys Longhorn and Rancher on top. Um, and it also sets me up with uh, kubectl on my terminal, so we can get pod. And we can see everything's up and running, everything from cert manager, rancher. It's kind of dovetails in the video that I made yesterday. I think what's kind of interesting is kind of talking through, you know, how to install apps. And there's really kind of like five major ways. The first one really is from the command line. And that really is going to be your traditional Helm install. I've kind of covered that in the past. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's do this. Let's go into my functions and then pull up a uh, longhorn. All right. So let me do that one. So here's longhorn, right? So it's a typical like helm upgrade, helm install. And really it's, you have to have some prior knowledge about the application, about the helm itself. Anytime someone is deploying an application, there's going to be a helm chart potentially. And from there, you can look at the different settings. Now, I like doing dash dash set. You can go into, let's actually do this. Let's go into Longhorn uh, Helm Chart. So you'll see that you can just search up the Helm Chart for it. One of the things to look for in the chart is the values.yaml. So this is, you know, like I said, I like doing dash dash set, but that correlates to something in this file. So you kind of have two choices. You can either copy the values, change what you want, and then do helm install dash F and point it to the values file. The reason why I do dash dash set dash dash set is because then it's concatenated into the, my one big bash script. It's about packaging. It's about just in my mind, simplicity, managing one file instead of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, there's some other techniques around helm where you don't even have to have the chart or the helm command line locally. You can basically say Helm, go use that imp, that chart over there. Um, so it's called Helm OCI. Look, look at that Helm OCI uh, using OCI based registries, right? So I think we need to use experimental on this one. Uh, login sub command push chart. It's pushing charts. Where is it? Uh, dependencies. Uh, where do I have a good example of that? Uh, nope. I've got one here. Hold on. Uh, my air gap to install where we can go to a function. Let's look at Longhorn again. So yeah, so Helm upgrade. I use upgrade dash I instead of install. It just means you can rerun it and it won't give you a weird error message, but you can use OCI to say, look, there's the chart. So you don't have to kind of manage it independently or manage it locally. You can just say, use that to deploy that, relatively speaking. Okay, so the first method, like I said, is, is command line. Now, command line is based on having a kube config, right, where you can, you can talk to the cluster. That's kind of important. Where we can kind of layer this is when we're dealing with rancher. So I just spun up a rancher cluster. Uh, you can actually effectively do the same thing. So let's look at our local cluster. <clears throat> and up here in the upper right, notice it says download kubeconfig. So that's effectively what I did. So my command line could talk to Rancher. The other thing you can do is bring up a shell. And it's the same kind of thing where I could potentially run Helm here. Uh, let's see if Helm's installed. Yeah, Helm's installed in, the, in this ter little terminal here, which is great. The other cool thing is K9S is here. So if you're a big K9S fan, you can go ahead and deploy and, and play with this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I got to learn K9S. I hear it's the next up and coming thing. <laughs> um, so that's kind of method number two, right? So kubeconfig locally on your machine, on your client, kubeconfig within Rancher. Another one which I... I use very rarely, but it is a method, is import from YAML. So if you wanted to actually paste in a YAML, um, let me 
Let's see if I can. I don't have an example at the moment. I'm not going to pull it up. <clears throat> but this this is really good for just pasting in like, you know, the, the pod object, an ingress object, something like that. What's important to understand is this is not repeatable. This is human. This is a human doing something. I would, great for dev, I would never do this in production. Production really is about a source of truth. What is it supposed to be there? Because things happen, servers go down, clusters have issues, full stop. So you want to be able to get back to that production known good state as fast as possible. And this is where I would never do this. I would lean more towards a GitOps approach. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk GitOps. Then we'll go to the last method and kind of dovetail back to GitOps. One of the great things about Rancher is that it has this continuous delivery built in. So this continuous delivery is a tool called Fleet. And what this allows us to do is to say, we can, we can point it to a Git repo, and let's say the local one. We can point it, and this just, by the way, these are the namespaces, these are the clusters. Default is downstream, local is the local cluster. With a Git repo, we can say, here, I wanna add a Git repo, I wanna add a repository invert that comes from GitHub, or a local version control. So uh, I have an example using Git in my workshops. But this will allow you to then store your YAML, store your Helm config, and Rancher will automatically read it every 45 seconds to a minute and automatically apply the changes. So let's actually do that. So let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy, uh, I've, I've scripted this, but literally, let's go back into the file, uh, functions. Yeah, it should be in functions. There we go. So literally all I'm doing is I'm creating a bunch of secrets and then I'm applying this git repo YAML. And if you noticed, it created four objects. So the first one is the who am I app. We can go look at that. Who am I, who am I? We can go look at resources. We can see networking, right? We can see an ingress object and come on. So here are my ingress objects and I can click on who am I. And there's my Who Am I app running already, right? So it's a way to kind of programmatically deploy stuff. I've also got this versions.rfed.io. <clears throat> this is an app that I created just to give you all the latest versions of stuff. And then I've got flask.rfed.io. So you can see very, very quickly, all of these apps were deployed using continuous delivery, which is really cool. Go back to Git repos, like the local. And notice those three apps are deployed. But here's where it gets really interesting it's actually deploying a downstream cluster too. And if we're curious what this looks like, um, here's my git repo file. So it's a pretty basic Kubernetes object for Rancher. I give it a repo, I give it a target namespace, I give it a path within the repo, and I even give it a branch. Pretty basic, okay? What does that look like? So in this case of Flask, I have it as a straight YAML. Yeah, you could copy and paste this in like I showed you before, but this is kind of a better way because I can go in here and if I edit this, it'll automatically make the change within about 45 seconds and deploy it. But not only do I, I not only can I use straight YAML, I have this template here, and now I have the ability to use downstream cluster. So let's go to DO dev. And so here with a fleet.yaml file, I can describe what the Helm template is. And this diff is just to clean up some of the, um, just to clean it up a little bit because for some reason fleet doesn't like uh saying it's completely ready when it is completely ready but then notice i have my values and this should look very similar to what we were talking about with helm earlier now just to kind of point something out we have a cluster template helm chart at this address that'll allow you to be programmatic about your downstreams so it's a helm chart but it deploys clusters not applications but it can be used in the same manner, right? So we'll close these out and notice it says downstream. So we can actually go to our cluster manager and we can see that it is actually deploying right now a bunch of nodes. This takes about five minutes, so we'll let this sit. So we've showed Helm from the command line, basically command line. We've showed import YAML. We've shown GitOps. Last but certainly not least, we have an app catalog. 
Okay, so Rancher by default comes with a bunch of applications that are single click, th three click deployment uh, capable. Case in point, you can deploy Longhorn or New Vector or any of these others. And I'll just kind of point out blue is SLA part of Rancher bundled in. Orange is community, nice to have, best effort, and red is experimental. Or red is more low lying driver, put it that way. Right, so let's pick something fun. Let's go with the monitoring stack. I like that. I use this one all the time, but it, it's nice because this will do Prometheus, Grafana, and Fluent D all with three clicks. So that literally was like chart, install, next. Okay, and what's cool about these app catalog, you notice what it's using? It's using Helm, right? So again, really installing applications comes down to either Helm or straight up YAML. Like that's gonna be the bottom line. Okay, um, we can see that it's installing some chart stuff, right? At least installing it, so I'm installing it. Cool. Uh, some of the other methods. So a couple things about the charts, which I also think is kind of interesting. You can close this out. Is that the charts can also be air gapped. The charts themselves, you can create your own Git repository with your own charts in it. So what you can absolutely do is go in here and disable, you can create your own. So if you're trying to build out a Kubernetes as a system for your users, if you've got a lot of users internally, you can plug in uh, your own version control, your own Git repo with your Helm charts. It's a specific format. Um, I actually have, believe it or not, if, you, if you're curious, I'll put this in the show notes. I did one a while, a, a couple of years ago, let me see if it's still here. It should be still here. Uh, catalog demo. When did I update it? Last year. Oh, five months ago. Look at me. Um, but this actually, this created a chart. Let me see if it was in the repos. So there's the nav link. There's the charts that I used. The deployment deploy service. So this was a front end app. And that was the app itself. So was it Fleet YAML? Yeah. So one of these created the actual catalog that was required. Yeah. CTL apply. Yeah. So one of these created the actual catalog entry item. And I pointed it to this, actually to Git T, uh, which was running locally. So this was all air gap too, which was, was fun trying to come up with uh, a method of doing this. So but it, it is completely capable to be able to do this, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's see where our cluster is. Yep, cool, our cluster is live. So we can see that our DO dev is live. Now we've got our downstream cluster. So hopefully this helps kind of highlight the five different ways, right? Whether it's import YAML, command line, your command line, the app catalog, or Git ops. The bottom line is it's either going to be a kubyml, it's going to be a helm chart, you can use fleet, there are other tools out there called Argo and Flux, but hopefully you can kind of get a sense of how to install some of these apps um, in a succinct, repeatable, that's the key, right, repeatable way. I hope this helps. Uh, thank you for giving me the comment, avi.darks, hopefully I pronounced your GitHub, uh, your YouTube username correctly, and you know. Make sure you subscribe and let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to see because, you know, he commented literally yesterday and this morning and now I'm making a video for him. I think, it, you know, it's it's important to make sure everybody knows how to do some of this stuff and, and be successful. Have a great day. Peace. Oh, I was supposed to close the video out. Now I'm closing it out. <laughs>